All right. I am super excited because we've got Adrian with us. And this is one of these experiences where it's like, if you were playing the guitar and like Tommy Emmanuel dropped by, it's like, he's my favorite guitarist. So like, if you want like four minutes of acoustic bliss, look up Tommy Emmanuel playing guitar boogie. And it's like amazing. And that's what we're going to get here in the context of Facebook ads with Adrian. So one of the things that I really appreciate about Adrian is she's such a genuine person to work with and like genuinely rejoices in other people's success. And so like, she'll do like Facebook lives and people will share their, you know, their stats and everything. And they'll be stressing out over it. And then Adrian will come in and just like fix stuff. And then, then they'll follow up again, you know, maybe a week or so later and kind of see how things are going and things are great. And you can just see on her face that she just really loves what she does. And she's really awesome at it too. I've known um, I've known Adrian for probably I guess 2018 as I met her through another mentoring program I was part of, and um, you know I feel like I know her a lot better than she knows me. You know she's been working with thousands and thousands of people and everything, and uh, but I feel like you know just watching her videos and everything and getting all the training and she's personally helped my account once or twice, and it's it's just been awesome. So I want to introduce you to her because she's got tons of awesome knowledge about Facebook, how to deal with the iOS stuff that's happening. And cost per click getting too high, people freaking out, people feeling like their their business is just failing now because of all these changes and they don't know what to do. And Adrian can help you with that stuff. And it's amazing value. She's an awesome person. And so um, that's kind of a huge introduction for who Adrian is. But Adrian, can you kind of jump in and tell me a little bit more about like how did you get like how did you get started in Facebook and like why is this stuff even interesting to you? And just tell us a little bit about your backstory. Yeah, for sure. Thank you so much for having me here today. I'm really excited to to talk to you guys about all of this. Um, my background is in marketing and PR. I have a degree in public relations. And so my background got started in your traditional, you know, uh, newsletters and pitching to the media and trying to get your your clients featured in the newspaper. And, and you know, this was back before Facebook ads even existed. And so I got my start in marketing in that way. And uh, when I got pregnant and decided to start a family, I got laid off from my job. And it was during Mm. that time when I was going to be a new mom and I was looking for information at the time I was living in Southern New Jersey. And I had this idea to start a parenting magazine. And uh, I was too stupid to know that it was a really dumb idea. (laughs) But I, uh, while I was pregnant, I set out to start a print publication. It's called South Jersey Mom. It's still in print today. And so I started my first business as a magazine publisher. And I really used that as a very selfish, self-serving way to get all these experts to come in and talk about parenting so I could learn how to be a good mom. And, um, and so that's how I kind of got out of the corporate world and moved into owning my own business. And then about four years in, well, actually two years into owning the magazine, I had another child. And then for the next two years, it was really, really hard. So running uh, a publication and having two littles is very, very difficult. And so I made the decision to sell my magazine and after I had it for four years. And then I took two years off. I homeschooled my kids. And then I just really was having that itch. Like I got to get back into business. I love business. I love marketing. And so I decided to start my own marketing agency. And in the beginning, again, I didn't know anything about Facebook ads. So I just started an agency doing what I already knew how to do. I was pitching to the media and I was getting my kids, my kids, my clients featured on TV. And then I discovered this pink haired lady named Sandy Krakowski. And she was talking about Facebook ads. (laughs) And I started taking some of, I took like two of her courses to learn like what even Facebook ads were. And I started dabbling in them for myself. And what I realized very quickly was that my background in marketing and advertising and what I knew about, um, you know, copy and speaking to the audience, all that good stuff really married with Facebook ads nicely. And uh, so it, quickly grew. And then I started offering that service to my clients. And by the end of my first year in business, I ditched every single thing that I was doing and said, I'm just doing Facebook ads. And that is really when things took off for me. I just became better and better and better at my craft. And um, that was about eight years ago. 
And that's how I got started. Wow. Wow. That's very interesting. That kind of that kind of answers a couple of questions about how you're so good at writing all the copy. <laughs> <laughs> so that's okay. Yeah. So when you started up the agency, was it like a like a like a web design agency or was it just mostly like PR and news and, and media or like what was well, what was the offer? Yeah, I was doing all the things, right? I was writing emails, I was building websites, I was pitching to the media. I, I mean, I knew how to do all kinds of marketing and advertising. And so I kind of was offering everything, which honestly really stunted the growth of my business because I did everything. Nobody really knew what I did. So I didn't get a lot of referrals and I wasn't really known for something. And I think that's why it had such a huge impact when I decided like, I'm just doing Facebook ads. And it was a scary choice because I all of a sudden was turning away people who were like, Hey, can I pay you to write some emails for me? And I'm like, Oh no, I don't do that anymore. And so to like turn away people who wanted to pay me was very difficult and scary, but I just... I just knew it was the right thing to do. And it really ha- has made all the difference. That is, I love what you're saying. We talk about this all the time in this group. And I refer to the concept of solution first marketing. Like mm-hmm. you come up with the solution first and then you do your marketing around that, especially in the context of like web design. Yeah. Because like, if you're a web designer and you don't have a solution, like normally it's like you get a referral from somewhere, then you interview them to figure out what they want you to do. And then you come up with the solution like last. Like after mm-hmm. all that, yeah. but if you do it backwards, where you come up with the solution first, it changes everything. Because if you have the solution last, all you've got are your services to market yourself with. Yeah. And yeah. so you end up saying, I do Facebook ads. I do social media management. I do SEO or web design. And that's what everybody says. Like right. everyone does those things. And so why mm-hmm. work with you? And then most people think, well, I guess maybe because I'm cheaper, <laughs> you know, I'll lower my price, <laughs> better value. Yeah, in the price wars. And that, that's exactly where we are. Like, if you want a website, you can get one for 500 bucks or whatever. It's like, yeah. you can't make a living off of that, at, at least not in a small agency. But if you come up with a solution first, then you can talk about the outcome of your solution in your marketing. Yep. And now and you don't sound like everybody else. It's a powerful and compelling marketing. It, yep. Absolutely. That's right. That's right. And that's one of the things that I kind of have learned from you, which is really cool. And so to hear that you actually did that exact thing where you kind of took that scary step and said, hey, you know what? I'm going to focus on one thing. I'm going to kind of shrink the ocean. So you ever hear people say, oh, yeah, I want to shrink my net because if I have a smaller net, I won't catch as many fish or whatever. Uh (laughs) And of course, the problem is not the net. It's the ocean. (laughs) That's right. It's like throw your net over the barrel instead of over the ocean. Then you have all the fish you want. And and you did that too. So that's really cool. Okay. I love it. Well, talk to me a little bit about what kind of attitude do you need to have in order to take that step? Because I remember like you sent out this email before and that I've been reading and you're like, you know, I can endure hardship for extended periods of time. (laughs) And, and like, I think it was just, maybe it was yesterday where you're saying, yeah, like if, you know, if you want something safe and comfortable and and reliable or just go get a job, you know, that's not what we do here. We do, you know, hard stuff and it's, but, but the upside is like super rewarding. You see all kinds of fulfillment in your life. I was talking to a guy yesterday, just, uh, just joined Doublestack. And he was like, man, I've, I'm, I'm managing 35 people. I've got uh, you know, all the success. He's like 52 years old. Mm-hmm. And he's like, but man, I'm not fulfilled. It's like, mm-hmm. it's just so unfulfilling. I just feel like I, I'm just day in, day out. I'm just wasting away, yeah. you know, pick it up. I want to do my own business now. And so do you feel like that that kind of, kind of resonates with you? Like, do you like, tell, talk a little bit about the attitude that you feel like you need to have in order to take that step that you just took. Yeah. I mean, I, I am a, I have a high risk tolerance. So I think that that is kind of where it starts. There are some people who have very low risk tolerance. And so taking that step can feel way more scary and they're focused on all the things that could go wrong. And Mm. because I have a high risk tolerance, I'm always focused on all the things that could go right. Um, And so my husband and I call this the what if game, right? Because he's more of someone who likes a lot of certainty and low risk tolerance and I'm the opposite. And so he'll play the what if game of like, well, what if this happens and that happens and it's all the negative stuff, right? And I'm like, but what if this happens and it's all the positive things? So I think that for my, just for me personally and my personality and kind of the way that I'm wired is that. I'm always seeing the opportunity in everything. And so when someone comes across an obstacle, they're often looking at all the ways that's telling them that they can't. 
And when Hmm. I have an obstacle come my way, I look at all the ways that I could turn that into something that I could still do what I want. (laughs) And um, I think part, again, it's a big part of my personality. I'm stubborn. I believe that there isn't a problem that can't be solved because either I know how to solve it or I have a friend of a friend of a friend or someone who knows whatever. So someone out there has solved this problem before. And so I just have this really high belief that uh, obstacles, you can find an opportunity in any obstacle and every problem is solvable. And if, and so I go into things in that way and whether it's Facebook ads or it's, you know, getting into college or, you know, whatever, whatever it is, I I just have that belief at my core. And so I can make really hard decisions and it doesn't mean that I, it's easy. It just means that I'm able to make a decision that I know is, is a difficult decision because I'm focused on the payoff. I'm not focused Mm. on how hard this is going to be or what all things could go wrong. I'm focused on the payoff and, and be, if I stay focused on the payoff, I can endure hard things for a long time. Well, wow. so you said three things that really jumped out to me. One is the initial mindset of, hey, there's a there's a way to overcome all of these things. This can be solved. Yes. The second thing that you mentioned was the payoff on the end is really going to push me through. So I've got the energy to do it. And then the third thing was, I don't have to do it by myself, yep. right? It's like, I might know somebody or a friend of a friend. I, I can be connected with people that can help. Yep. And I think that third one is a huge obstacle for a lot of people because they don't really know they don't really know anyone who can help or they don't feel like they're or part they of think a community. They don't know anyone. Yeah, they think they don't. Yeah, they they feel like they're alone. They feel like it's all on me when it's when it's not that way. It's like there's you, there's me, there's there's our friends, there's all kinds of people that can help. Yeah. Which is cool. And, and honestly, Facebook is a big part of why or how I can find resources, right? We all, you might think you don't know someone, but if you had a problem and you put it out on there on social or whatever to your friends and said, who do you know who does X, Y, and Z? I bet you somebody knows somebody, right? And that is often how I will solve problems, whether it's, you know, posting it on my personal page or now that I'm in several business groups where there's other business owners there. I think that that's a really big, um, a great asset for business owners these days is to, you know, back in the day you had to belong to like a networking group, right? And you pay and you went to like your monthly meetings and you could brainstorm with business owners there. Well, Facebook has created a a place where you've got a networking group online anytime you want it. And so, you know, being in other groups is you should go in there and say, who has done this or who has solved this or who knows about this whenever you have a problem, because if we rely on our own knowledge and ability to solve every problem in business, then we're going to see all of these roadblocks. But if we know that I don't have to be the one to solve this, I just got to find somebody who can solve it for me. And the truth is in 2021, I mean, it'd be shocking to find a problem that couldn't be solved. You know what I'm saying? So um, I just, I just always have that attitude of every problem can be solved. Well, that's a, it's a great segue into what's kind of happening now with Facebook. It's like there's this huge problem of the of the iOS 14.5 update coming through. Yeah. And for anyone who hasn't been following Facebook ads, basically what that means is Apple has released a privacy update that, that causes all the people that have apps in the app store. when After you get the update, once you launch the app, it says, will you allow this app to like track you? And so not only do they use unusually heated language that they don't use for themselves, by the way. Yep. Like just the other day, I launched, um, I clicked on an MP3 on my MacBook and it launched Apple Music. And it basically said in order to play an MP3 that I recorded of myself, it's not even uh, subscribed to any kind of music service or whatever. It's like, you've got to start allowing them to track your entire music library, all the songs that you play, like all your purchases, your browsing and search history. But of course they don't say that. They say, will you share this information with us so we, we can make your experience better? We can give you a better experience. Yep. Exactly. But for everyone else in the world, you, you are forced to say, will you allow this app to track you track across you other apps and websites? And of yeah. course, nobody, nobody wants to be in tracked. Nobody wants to be tracked, right? So it definitely is, that's good marketing, right? They've turn, twisted the marketing and used certain words to create a feeling of non-trust in one way. And they've twisted the words to create a sense of trust. And like, we're here for you and doing the right thing for you in another way. Oh, it's, a, it's so outrageously disingenuous. <laughs> but it's a huge problem for people that run Facebook ads and rely on that traffic. Yeah. So there's a problem 
what would you recommend? So I, I know what I'm doing. I, you know, I got connected with you and, and you've helped me a ton. Talk a little bit about this iOS change and what you're seeing and, and how that's impacting businesses. Yeah, well, you, you know, the way the iOS updates, and honestly, it's still happening right now. And so we're still learning, you know, constantly what the changes are and how they're going to affect everyone. And, and so we don't know the end result yet. But uh, a big part of it was losing the ability to track all of the actions or the conversions that a person takes. And so, for example, when you're running a Facebook ad and someone clicks on the ad and they go to your website and buy something, the pixel would send data back to Facebook to say, hey, somebody bought something. And Mm -hmm. it would tell you which audience it came from and which ad it would came from. And then you could use that information to then make adjustments to your ads and say, oh, wow, this audience is getting me really good cost per sale. So I'm going to increase my budget there. And this other one, not so great. So I'm probably going to turn that one off. And so what it does is it allowed you, the data allowed you to make decisions with your ads that would increase your profitability and increase the good performing ads and and decrease on the poor performing ads. Well, because of the changes with iOS, they have taken away some of that transparency and you can't track every action that people take. Uh, some One action is still trackable, but if there's more than one, if they purchase more than one thing, or let's say you're running ads to a, a webinar where they they one of the actions is to sign up for the webinar, another action is to purchase something or book a call, you can't track both of those actions. And so now you're losing, again, important information that would allow you to make your ads more profitable. And... a Facebook has warned that this change will drop the performance of ads by as much as 60%. And what we've seen so far, um, what I've seen amongst the clients whose ads that I, I manage myself or the clients that I coach is that costs on the front end have gone up. But once they get into your funnel, the numbers are actually staying very similar. So the percentage of people buying or the percentage of people signing up is staying the same or even improving on mine. I'm even seeing an improvement. But the cost on the front end is really high. And here's why. Cost per click on Facebook is uh, impacted by a lot of things. But the one thing that is really important that has the biggest impact on your cost per click is your click-through rate. Right. And so that is the number of people who see your ad that actually click on the ad. And Facebook typically would reward you when you reached a 1% click through rate as saying, hey, you're putting great content out that people, this audience is liking because they're clicking at a 1% or higher. And that's kind of like our measurement of good. And so we're going to reward you by bringing your cost per click down. And if you get a really low click through rate, then they penalize you and they charge you more in hopes you'll turn your ad off because they want you to put good content on their platform. Well, when ads aren't now, when people are opting out of tracking and now Facebook can't serve them ads that are as relevant to what they're interested in because they've said, no, you can't track my actions. So therefore I can't really, I won't get as many ads that are as applicable. We're seeing the click-through rates drop, right? Mm Because now ads are being shown to people that it's kind of irrelevant to them so that there's not as many people clicking and that's driving up the cost. Uh, And and so that is the challenge that people are facing right now. And there are a couple of things that you can do, at least right now, to try to overcome that and get your click-through rates up. Um, And one of those things is your ad copy. Your ad copy, what the ad says, now more than ever, it's really, really important for you to write copy that's specific to your audience, specific to the problem that they have, and is compelling enough to make them go, hmm, well, what if I turn this out on if I don't click this ad? What does this person know that I don't know? It could be the golden nugget that fixes this problem for me. And it's so compelling that it makes them want to click. And you used to be able to get away with pretty vanilla ad copy, and you just can't do that anymore. Uh, so that's the first thing, is, is the ad copy is really important. The second thing is that the images in the ads, again, we used to pick kind of okay stock images and they would do just fine. But these days, in order to get people to stop scrolling and actually click on your ad, we have to get their attention and they're more distracted than ever. And so your ad creatives need to be creative. (laughs) 
They need to uh, stand out in the noisy newsfeed and really grab their attention. Again, this has always been a rule, but it's more important now than it ever was before. And then thirdly is targeting is still important. So although we're losing some transparency and the who you show your ad to is still very, very important. And there's some people out there that say, hey, just do wide open targeting and let the pixel do its thing, right? Let the algorithm find your people. Let Facebook do its thing. And I have to tell you that it's got to be the worst advice I've ever heard anybody <laughs> give. That is the laziest way of doing Facebook ads. And it is the least profitable. So if you hear people talking about that, just kind of ignore that. The targeting of who you show your ads to is, is even more important, in my opinion, now than it was before because of some of the lack of that customization that we need to try even harder to get it in front of the right people. Those are awesome tips. Those are great. All of them are huge. The, the, the two big issues that I've been struggling with with regard to Facebook ads are the ad performance tracking, like you were just talking about, and then the targeting as well. Mm-hmm. So like, those are huge things. I would rely on the pixel. I had the, the, that whole thing. And like a ton of the people that I tend to work with tend to have iOS devices. Yes. You know, that's, that's a huge part of what we do. And so now those people are saying, yeah, I don't want you to target me based on, you know, all the things that you might learn about websites and other things. And so you have to be much more creative in that. So talk a little bit about some of the resources that you might be able to offer people to help with some of these major problems that are happening, especially they're, they're new and major, which is one yeah. of the things that's really confusing right now. Yeah, well, I mean, what we didn't even touch on is the com- the compliance that Apple is requiring of advertisers now with this mm. update. Like we talked about how it's affecting ads, but there are some new um, compliance features that Apple is requiring. Um, and this isn't just Facebook. Facebook. This is YouTube, Pinterest, LinkedIn, TikTok. Anybody who's doing paid traffic has to follow these rules by Apple. This is not a rule that Facebook changed. And um, so Apple is requiring people to verify their domain. You can only run traffic to a domain that you own. So no more running traffic to a ClickFunnels URL or a Kajabi URL or anything like that. You have to run traffic to a domain that you own. Um, There is this tool called aggregated event measurement you have to set up. Like there's about three or four um, (laughs) hecky type things that you have to set up in order to be compliant and be able to run ads. And I did put together, as soon as this launched on April 26, I got busy. I spent like 12 hours that day creating a a free training because everybody needs this, like that takes you step-by-step of how to verify your domain, how to set up aggregated event measurement, like all of the requirements that Apple is now put in place in order for you um, to be compliant and be able to run ads. So I have a free training about that. Um, that uh, people could get access to and it'll walk them step by step exactly how to do it. Like I didn't hold anything back. I just gave it all to people to say, go do this. And it works. So I actually followed the training, did all of the things. I have not had an ounce of trouble with any aspect of my ads at all, other than trying to figure out how to track the performance and everything, you know, based on some of the things that you can't overcome. But as far as keeping the ad account active, not getting suspended, not getting, you know, the whole thing shut down, even if you're not compliant. So some people can't even run ads at all because they haven't like verified their domain and stuff. Yep. And like some people like call you like in tears over all of this stuff. Yes, it has been pretty crazy. And I just feel terrible for people because Facebook did try to warn people for a long time that this was coming. I mean, they talked about it, I feel like for a good six to nine months before it actually happened. Mm -hmm. But I I think that for people that are not like techie, a lot of the language was so over their head Mm -hmm. that they just were like, I don't even know what this means. And so that's why in the training, I tried to really break it down and make it easy to understand. Um, Because although I do Facebook ads, I am not actually a super techie person. So I try to keep things as simple as possible um, for people to be able to follow if they're if they're not advanced. And it's huge, and it's 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 unbelievable that it's even free. I mean, people charge tons of money for that stuff. So I'm going to put a link for you guys to check this stuff out. So look for that in the description wherever you're watching this or listening to this. Check out this link. You'll be able to go over to Adrian's free course to get this iOS training. But she has other help too. You want to talk about some of the other things that you're offering too? Yeah. So uh, we have what's called the Power Players Club. And this is a membership club for business owners 
who want two things. Number one, they want education, right? Like teach me how to do the Facebook ads. Give me the mm-hmm. insider secrets of how, you know, agencies are running ads and are very effective. So I have all the trainings on everything you need to know about Facebook ads in there. And then we, the second component is the support. Because you could have all the information in the world, but if things go sideways or you hit a glitch and, uh, you know, Facebook makes a change, uh, you know, then the support is really good. So we do weekly weekly Q&A calls. We have a Facebook group. We have copywriting coach, you know, all kinds of good stuff in um, Power Players Club to help educate people and give them the support that they need. Now, do you feel like that's best for people who are kind of running Facebook ads for themselves? Or what do you think about people that run ads for other people? Yeah, the it works great for either one of them. I would say that about 90% of people in Power Players Club are business small business owners that are doing the ads themselves. And the other mm-hmm. 10% are people who do ads for other people. Uh, so they're their own media buyers or ad agencies and uh and maybe they're haven't reached the they're more new, right? And so they're still looking for that support. I know when I was new with Facebook ads, I had a couple of groups I was in where I could continue to get support. And so there is a portion of the group that are ads managers, but most of them are small business owners that are doing their own. Okay. Does it matter what you're advertising for? Like, does it have to be some like $10,000 course thing or, or can it be you know, organic coffee, like, look, which would be a totally different price point. Like, is there any kind of profile for who this is best suited for in terms of like what they're selling or what they're advertising? The trainings that are in there are general enough that they would apply to someone who, whether they're selling low ticket, high ticket, mid ticket, where the customization or personalization, I should say, comes in is in those Q&A calls or the Facebook group where someone Mm -hmm. might say, I have a webinar going to a high ticket and they'll ask a question specific to that or someone mm-hmm. else that that is like, hey, I have an e-commerce store and I'm sending them to this page to buy X. And so the trainings themselves, I tried to keep them general enough that they apply no matter what your offer is or price point. Um, and we use the Q&A calls and the support to personalize that information for your specific offer. And I think you also have like a, like a free... Facebook lives that you do from time to time. In fact, I think you were given a, a talk a couple of weeks ago about your your top three favorite funnels that are working now. And yes. that was when I actually attended that. And I think that was right before I actually joined your program. I listened to that talk. Yeah. And that was really helpful because it's like there's all kinds of things at varying price points. And in fact, you can actually interweave them. So you can like start with something less expensive and kind of work your way up to more expensive stuff. And so there's that too. Yep. Yeah. If you um, go to my page, Adrian Richardson, that's just the name of my page on Facebook. Every Tuesday, I do a Facebook Live and I cover a different topic. So we'll do anything from, you know, choosing images, you know, ad copy, you know, how long you should let a campaign run before you give up on it, you know, budgeting. Like, so we kind of do a different topic every week. Uh, and so that's a great way to just kind of get some free help. Uh, those are, you know, very specific and I don't really hold anything back. I tell everybody all the goods about it. And then I also have a YouTube channel where I upload some things there. Um, and I'm just starting with the YouTube channel. I think I just hit a hundred subscribers. So I'm like, I've arrived. (laughs) (laughs) I've always just focused on Facebook since that's my jam, but I've also started adding things to YouTube. Well, I'm going to take, I'm going to ask Adrian to send me links to all this stuff, put all of this stuff in the description. You can check all of it out. And one of the things that I just kind of to wrap things up, a lot of people, especially people that listen to this in in this group, they put a lot of emphasis on like organic social media marketing and like search engine optimization and stuff like that. And I don't discredit those things, but they're they're like long term solutions. Whereas like I think that in fact, I probably wouldn't even be standing here right talking to you guys if it wasn't for paid traffic. Mm -hmm. So like I'm all about paid traffic for myself, for my clients, because You can get really rapid results. You can instantly see the return on investment. And while you're doing that, you can still do all the other stuff too. And so if you're interested in adding paid traffic into your offer or doing it for yourself to find your own clients, or even if you're a double stacker and you you have your solution and you want to get some clients from that, you know, Facebook ads are huge. Like I've gotten the best return on investment from Facebook ads and I've run ads everywhere. I've run ads on Facebook, also on Instagram, which is kind of Facebook too, but I've tried Twitter ads. I've tried YouTube ads. Twitter ads were horrible for me. Absolutely abysmal. Um, YouTube is better, but Facebook is the best. And if you're interested at all 
and doing anything with regard to Facebook ads. I mean, I just put my full endorsement behind Adrian. I mean, she's been so helpful to me. She's got free stuff. You got to check out the iOS training. She does free Facebook Live. She's got this Power Players Club that I'm actually actively enrolled in. So it's like, check it out. Like, if you care at all about Facebook, it's hard to find people that are genuine, that care about you, that aren't all about, hey, let's drive a Lamborghini or whatever, you know, like all that crazy <laughs> stuff, and that are approachable and that you can talk to. And, um, and hopefully from today's conversation with Adrian, you've kind of gotten to know a little bit about her, where she's from and, you know, her history and how she got to be this expert in Facebook and check out some of these resources. And it's going to be a huge blessing to you. It's, it's, it's amazing content. Even the free stuff is amazing. So I'll put links to all that stuff down in the description or wherever you're watching it, check out for the links. And uh, Adrian, do you have anything else you kind of wanted to, to wrap up with before we um, close down the podcast for today? Yeah, I would just like to say that for those of you who uh, like organic traffic and your focus has been on that, Facebook ads are the perfect way to add fuel to your organic. So you don't need to abandon your organic tra- you know, strategy. And it is a long game. And I do think that people have become short-sighted and they, Facebook is like the immediate, is like more immediate. And so they've given up on the long game. And I think that a good business owner should have both. But Facebook ads can be really powerful in taking that great organic content that you're making and putting a little money behind it. And you're just adding fuel to the fire. So for those people that are, you know, all about the SEO or the social media or the whatever, great. I don't think you need to stop doing those things, but use Facebook ads to to fast forward uh, the results of all that. Oh, yeah. One last step based on what Adrian just said is email marketing. Like I would say probably 90% of my email list as a result of these Facebook ads. Yeah. And that, I mean, that's organic marketing, I guess, but it's, it's just out of well, all the things I've ever done. You're growing, you can use the Facebook ads, the, the email list. To, I think it's very important for business owners these days to build an email list. We know that social media can change the rules whenever they want. The platforms can kick people off whenever they want, right? Like we don't own that. But once you get someone on your email list, you own that asset. And so using Facebook ads to build an asset for you that you own, that you can email those people as many times as you want, and you don't have to keep paying for it, uh, is a really smart use of Facebook ads. Absolutely. Well, perfect. We're totally on the same. That's awesome. So Facebook ads, email marketing, all the other long game stuff with SEO, it all really is intertwined. So, uh, but if you care about Facebook, check out Adrian's stuff, and you're going to thank yourself for doing it. So awesome, Adrian. Thank you so much for spending a half an hour with us talking about all this stuff. Great to get to know more about you. Just thanks so much. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Awesome, guys. High five to everybody.